hi and hello to everyone in this video we are going to discuss about the the noise in the double side pan suppressed carrier type receiver particularly the receiver we are considering is the coherent type uh, receiver that is coherent detection we are going to use in the receiver side right in the last video we discussed about the receiver model right a general receiver model but here the receiver the model is nothing but your double side pan suppressed carrier receiver with coherent detection welcome to the lecture so this is the receiver model we are using for the double side band suppressed carrier type receiver okay with coherent detection we know this is your coherent detection what is a coherent detection in the receiver side we are just using the local oscillator producing a carrier signal i mean producing a oscillating signal right as that of the modulating carrier frequency right while you are modulating you are using a frequency of fc in demodulating that is the receiver side also we are using a uh, cos signal of frequency fc okay so what is this uh, what is the, in what way it is different from the demodulator this is the part you can clearly see in the demodulator we have a modulated input what more type of modulated input it is a double side band suppressed carrier signal we are representing that as s of t and it is added with the noise signal which is a gaussian noise white gaussian noise which is omega of t we are going to study the impact of noise in this receiver clear this entire thing is called receiver model okay so this summed up uh, uh, this modulated signal and the noise are summed up here it passed through a band pass filter the output is uh, the modulated signal plus the filtered noise n of t this omega of t is filtered that is called n of t again this multiplied with cos is a product modulator the output v of t is nothing but x of t multiplied with cos omega ct then it is passed through a low pass filter we get the output the internet output we expect to be the message signal along with the noise right okay so we will see one by one right so this is the model now we are taking a double side band suppressed carrier signal the soft t it is represented by a general form we know this the cac cos 2 pi fct multiplied with message signal m of t okay so we know ac cos 2 pi fct is the carrier signal m of t is the message signal where c is a system dependent scaling factor the c is a constant okay so this is a this is the expression for double side band suppressed carrier signal that is a message multiplied with the carrier gives the double side band suppressed carrier okay now um, what about the power spectral density right we have to see the power spectral density of the message is given by the expression s m of f what is power spectral density last video we discussed right power spectral density is nothing but the um, the range of frequencies for 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 the frequency what is the power of that signal okay when the frequency is changing the message signal will be changing right at particular frequency at each of the particular frequency what about the power that is called power spectral density okay so if you know the power spectral density then we can compute the average power p just by integrating the power spectral density that is just by integration means evaluating the total area under the power spectral density gives the average power that is your p okay so we have computed p right that's p of the message now what about the total power you can see here uh, you can see this is the expression of s of t right we, we know the power of m of t is p what about the power of this term right that is cac right it is an amplitude okay so it is given as c square ac square p by 2 okay just you are multiplying both the powers power of the message signal along with the power of the carrier signal okay so we got the power this is the power of the uh, power of the uh, double side band suppressed carrier modulated signal at the receiver input now we are going to study about the noise right we are assuming we have assumed the noise to be a gaussian noise right the noise uh, white gaussian noise it has a spectral density of n not by 2 right so if the bandwidth of the modulated signal we know what is the bandwidth of the modulated signal it is 2 fm double side band means two times of the message signal frequency message signal frequency 2 fm so what is the average noise power average noise power if you uh, compute you will getting as 2 fm n not okay so what about the signal to channel signal to noise ratio channel signal to noise ratio right if you go by the name it is a signal to noise ratio 
so it is the ratio of signal power divided by the noise power right we have just now computed what is the signal power it is c square ac square p by 2 what about the noise power it is 2 fm n naught okay so the ratio is the channel signal to noise ratio that is the at the input side at this point at this point at this point okay what is the signal to noise ratio we have we are getting okay that is the channel signal to noise ratio next we are going to compute the signal to noise ratio at the output right we are going to do that okay so channel to signal to ratio we got this right next we move into uh, that is signal to noise ratio o output of the double sideband suppressed carrier receiver okay so you know what is x of t we have already seen x of t is sum of modulated output modulated signal plus the filtered noise n of t is the filtered noise right and in the last video i clearly explained how to represent the noise in terms of in phase noise component and quadrature noise component right okay so s of t is just c a c cos 2 pi f c t m of t n of t this is resolved into two things right one is n i of t and n q of t n i of t is in phase noise component n q of t is quadrature noise component right you know why it's, it's always this cos and sin are in 90 degree okay 90 degree quadrature that's why they are called uh, quadrature noise component okay now uh, what is happening this x of t is multiplied with the oscillator okay local oscillator signal cos 2 pi f c t we have seen this everything right okay, once again you can see x of t is nothing but s of t plus the filtered noise then x of t what is v of t x of t multiplied with cos 2 pi f c t your y of t is the filtered version of low pass filtered version of v of t right okay so you can see your v of t your v of t is x of t cos 2 pi f c t right substitute your x of t we have got the x of t what is x of t that is the signal s of t plus the noise okay noise filter noise right you plug it everything then multiply with cos 2 pi f c t this x entire term multiply cos 2 pi f c t mathematical manipulations right just you multiply and uh, cos term inside right it becomes cos square this is cos square this is sine and cos okay then you can take uh, this cos term cos square term from the first two terms okay you can take the cos square term from the first two terms then we know what is cos square right cos square i can write it as 1 plus cos 2 2 pi f c t by 2 then similarly sin and cos i can write it as 1 by 2 1 by 2 sin a plus b plus sin a minus b so this is your a this is your b right so it is 2 pi f c t plus 2 pi f c t 2 pi f c t minus 2 pi f c t okay so it is uh, 0 sin 0 is 0 gone okay so now you uh, okay now this the multiply 2 inside becomes cos 4 pi f c t you multiply this term with 1 by 2 we get this you multiply this term with cos 4 pi f c t we get this okay then this n q of t you are multiplying we are getting this term we have three terms here among the three terms this v of t is passed through a low pass filter okay low pass filter permits only the low frequency this 2 f c frequency what is the frequency of this term the 2 fc is the frequency the frequency of this term is 2 fc 2 fc they are blocked so these two terms are blocked so at the receiver output we would be getting the term only the first term that is cac mt plus the in phase component ni of t by 2 so this is the receiver output clear now for this term y of t we are going to compute the power okay again i have written the receiver output right okay so what about the average power of the uh, of the message part this is the message part m of t it is given as uh, c square a c square p by 4 what about the average power of the noise part it is uh, 1 by 2 is there right so it is 1 by 2 fm n naught okay now what about the signal to noise ratio at the output or a signal to noise ratio you go by the name it is a signal power divided by the noise power signal to noise ratio right the signal power is this this is the noise power the ratio we have obtained this okay right now the finally we are going to solve about the figure of merit this is the entire figure of merit right what is the figure of merit it is nothing but the uh, signal to noise ratio of the output divided by the signal to noise ratio of the channel or i can say at the input s n r i okay the ratio between them both are equal so i get the figure of merit as one okay this is of course a good thing signal of merit is a good thing right okay Okay, in the next video, we will be discussing about the uh, 
the same receiver impact of noise in the receiver model but for a single sideband suppressed carrier type coherent detection receiver okay in the next video we will we'll be learning that right thanks for listening any doubts you post your questions in the comment section i will be happy to help you thank you